Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 300. And 15, I believe. 315, and we are on page number 165. Page 165. Please turn to it. Page 165, you see two problems there problem number one and two. Those are the two problems that we're going to solve today. And if you're interested in watching the original solutions to these two problems, you will find the original solutions that appeared in the first and the second edition. Uh, the first edition is what I'm holding in my hand here, and you will find the original solution to these problems on day number 51 and 52. Just type in GRE Math, day 51, and then 52, and you will find the same problem done at a little bit, done at a little bit more slower pace, done a little bit more in depth. Here's here is what is given to us: a picture that looks like this, as best as I can. So we have two lines that are off center. And we are being asked to find the area of this rectangle, parallelogram rather, area of this parallelogram versus, we are being asked to compare the area, area of this parallelogram, A, B, C, D, column A, area of the, how do you spell parallelogram, P, A, R A versus column B, which is simply 24. Well, what can we do here? Well, the area of the parallelogram, in order for us to understand how to figure out the area of the parallelogram, we have to first understand what would we do if you were asked to figure out area of one of these triangles. Let's talk about triangle, let's talk about triangle A, B, D. If we had to figure out the area of this triangle, we are told, we are told that this base here, this is given to us, this base here is 4. What else we are told? There is something else we are told. There is something else we are told. We are told that this side is 6. How would we figure out the area of this triangle? Let's, let's change this problem, shall we? Let's change this problem to something else. Instead of a parallelogram, let's talk about area of the triangle, area of the triangle A, A, B, D versus 12. What do we do now? Let's first take care of talk about that. What's the answer here? We know, er, we know area of the triangle is one half base times height. One half base we know is four times height. And height, we do not know. It's not given to us. So the people who get this question wrong, there are two kind of people who are gonna get this wrong. There, are, there is one kind of per, 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 per person who's gonna put six as a height, and they would say that these two quantities are equal. And there are, going to, there are other type of people who are going to get this question wrong because, and they, so the first type, they're going to use 6 as a height and they're going to say the answer is C because 1 half of 24 is 12. The second type of people who are going to get this question wrong are the people who realize that 6 is not the height, 6 is not the height, they're going, to, they're going to say, they understand these people, the second category is a little bit of a higher category and they realize that the height of this triangle is this right here. Height means exactly exactly what it says. Height of a triangle means exactly what it says. It tells us how high the triangle is from where? From the base. And to figure out the height, we have to draw a perpendicular. This is the height. And we do not know what it is. So that's the second category of people who are going to say we do not know the height and therefore they're going to say we cannot figure out what this is and therefore the answer is D. What these people forget, uh, forget, what these people forget, or what these people don't realize is that these questions are called quantitative comparison. We are supposed to compare the two quantities, not compute anything. We are not supposed to compute anything. Nobody is asking us, nobody is asking us what is the area of this triangle. We are simply being asked, how does the area of this triangle compare to 12? To which the answer is, we do not know what the height is, we do not know what the height is, 
but whatever the height is, we know for a fact, whatever the height is, it has to be less than 6. How? Why? Because if this quantity is 6, the line coming at an angle is 6, if this line sitting at an angle is tall is 6 inches tall, then coming straight, of course, it's going to be less than 6 inches. We do not know what, but it is, whatever it is, it's less than 6 inches. And therefore, 2 times something less than 6 inches is going to be something less than 12 inches. And therefore, we're comparing something less than 12 versus 12, the answer is B. So that's how you would solve this problem. Now let's get back to the original problem, where we're talking about not the area of the, area of the triangle, ABD, but rather the area of the parallelogram. Area of the parallelogram, and not 12, but 12 times 2. And why do you suppose it's 12 times 2? Because the area of these two triangles are equal. The area of the triangle area of the triangle ABD and the area of the triangle BCD, they are equal. Of course they are equal. So the area of this parallelogram is simply base times height. That's all it is. It's simply base times height. It's not one half base times height. It's just base times height. Base we know is 4 and height we know whatever it is is something less than 6. Height we do not know what it is but whatever it is we know it's less than 6. Therefore 4 times something less than 6. The area of the parallelogram whatever it is is got to be something less than 24 and we are being asked to compare that versus 24. A quantity that is less than 24 versus 24, of course the answer is B. Do you understand? So that was problem number, that was problem number one. Always keep in mind that in quantity to comparison questions, many a times we will not be able to compute the exact value of what it is that is being shown in front of you, or whatever it is that they ask you to calculate. But that's the whole point. We are not supposed to calculate, we are not supposed to compute anything. We simply have to understand that we are supposed to compare with the other quantities. Do you understand? We are simply some, supposed to compare it. Let's do, let's do the next one. The next problem, the next problem is a nasty one. I must warn you. Next problem is a nasty one. So the first, what we have to do is take our time and put a proper picture on the blackboard because having the proper picture would help us a lot. So we have Okay, you must have the book in front of you. Open the uh, if you had if you haven't uh, haven't uh, haven't done if you haven't done so yet. Open the book. Turn to page 165 and quickly look at the chart that I'm reading at the bottom here on the page. So we have a 15 observations in the first interval. Then we have 35 observations. Another 15. Then it looks like 12. Then a 10. Then a 5 and a 3. So that's what you're going to put here. So it goes all the way up to 35. So 5, 10, 15, 20. 25, 30 and 35. I shouldn't have done that high. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, and thirty-five. There you go. And we have fifteen observations. So this is five, ten, fifteen, fifteen observation in the first interval. Then we have thirty-five observation in the second interval. Then we have another 15 observation in the third interval. Then it looks like we have a 12 observation, around 12, 1, 2, somewhere here. 12 observation in the, in the fourth interval. Then we have 10 observation in the next interval. Then we have 5 observations. And then looks like we have about 2 or 3, 1, 2, 3, somewhere here. It doesn't have to be accurate. They don't expect it to be accurate because it is impossible to be accurate because there is nothing written there we just have to be reasonable that's all it is we just have to be reasonable why because we are being asked to compare two quantities we are being asked to compare two quantities not compute them in the first column it says the average of the 95 observation now when they say the average of the 95 observation they do not mean what is the average of 95 observation if somebody was to ask you what is the average of these 95 observation based on the chart that they gave us, the answer is we do not know. There is no way to calculate it. Similarly, there is no way to calculate the median. Nobody is asking us to compute anything. These questions that I remind you over and over again are called quantitative comparison, not computation. It is impossible to compute anything here. We just want to, comp we just want to have comparison of the two quantities. This is what it is. And there are five intervals there. The one interval goes from 0 to 5, the other one goes from 6 to 10, the other one goes from 11 through 15, then it goes from 16 through 20, and then from 21 through, uh, 20, uh, to, uh, 21 through 25, and then 26 through 30. 
and finally 31 through 35. Are you with me so far? Let's get going. Enough of the talk. How are we going to compute the mean? We are, we are supposed to compu compare the mean versus the median of these 95 observations. There are 95 observations. They tell us that in the problem, they tell us it says in the course of an experiment, 95 measurements were recorded. So we know there are 95 observations, and we can actually figure it out here very quickly if we were to add that. 15, 35, 15, 35, 15 again, 10. Did I make a mistake? Or 12? 12 observation, 10 observation, 5 observation. And the last category must be three observation, must be three, because of the fact that it ends in a five, so this three and a two make a five. You see that? So we have five, 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 that's 20, 25, five, carry two, one, two, three, four, five, six, and three, nine. You see that? There are 95 observations in these categories. So there are 15 here, 35 here, 15 again, 12 again here, 10 observations here, 5 observations here, and 3 here. How we can calculate the mean and the, uh, the median? Again, that's a tricky question. We are not going to calculate it. Let's first, let's first talk about the me median. Median is actually very easy. Median is very simple. Why? Because there are 95 observations. If we subtract 1, we get 94. And what is half of 94? Half of 94. Half of 94 is how many, na how many twos in 9? Nine? 9 has 4 twos. 4 twos are 8, after we take away 8 from the 9, we have a remainder of 1, 1 goes and joins the 4, becomes a 14, and 14 has 7 twos. In other words, we have 47 observations here, 47 observations on this side, we have 47 observations on this side, 47 plus 47 is 94, and here is our median, which is the 48th observation. This is the 47th observation, the last observation here is 47, this is 49th observation, the 48th observation is our median. And that we can actually figure out which intervals it falls in. We will not figure out the exact value, but we will know which interval it falls in. So let's get going, okay? Enough of the talk, watch what happens. So we are looking for 48th observation. We are looking for 48th observation. Here is 15 observation, here are 35 observations. In other words, by the time we cross into the third interval, we have 50, 50 observations already, which means the 48th observation falls in this interval. 48th observation falls in this interval. But we do not know what it is. All we know is that we have 35 observations between the value of, we have 35 observations between the value of, between the value of 6 to, 6 to 10. 6 to 10, right, right in this, uh, this is 6 to 10 in this interval, from 6 to 10. There are 35 such observations, but we do not know what those observations are. And therefore, and therefore, it is quite possible, it is quite possible that all of those 35 observations are sixes. We have six, 35, 35 sixes. It is also just as, just as equally possible that all of 35 of those observations are 10. Or maybe all of them are sixes and then we have one observation that is 10. We well, get the idea or this is a mixture of six, all, uh, mixture of all six, seven, eight, nine. We do not know what they are. We do not know what they are. There is no way to tell what the 48th observation is. 48th observation is going to be third last observation. There is going to be 48th, 49th, and then the 50th observation right here. Maybe all of those observations are sixes, and then there is one ten. Or maybe they are all tens. Or maybe we have six, seven, and eight. Or maybe eight, nine, six, seven, eight, and nine. We do not know. All we can say here with certainty, all we can sell here with certainty is that the median, whatever it is, falls between 6 and a 10. You still with me in the story? That's all we can claim here. That is the only thing we know. That is the only thing we know for a fact. And that is the only thing we can say with certainty. That the median of these 95 observations, whatever it is, must be something that falls between a 6 and a 10. Because that's, that's the interval where it falls in. You understand? Now let's talk about the mean. Mean is going to be... Mean is going to be a little tricky. Mean is going to be a little tricky. Let's look at the mean. 
let's look at the two extreme. Let's talk about a situation what the value of the mean is going to be if it's just 6. If the mean happens to be if if mean happens to be less than 6 then the answer because because the median is median is between 6 and 10 it's not 6 it's between 6 and 10 if mean happens to be less than 6 and since median is let's put it here right like this I'm going to put down let's call the mean average so that we don't confuse with the median let's just call it A, A for the average instead of calling it mean let's just call it average if average happens to be less than 6 and we know that the median is between 6 and 10 not equal to 6 but something more than 6 something all the way up to 10 if that's the case in that case the answer would be answer would be B if mean happens to be something between more than 6 but less than 10 and this, so this is also between 6 and 10 since median is also less median is also less this is mean since median is also something between 6 and 10 and this also happens to be something between 6 and 10 not less than 6 but not more than 10 something between 6 and 10 and this is also between 6 and 10 in that case the answer would be D we, we do not know which one is bigger if it turns out if it turns out that somehow we can establish if it can turns out that somehow we can establish that mean of this thing whatever it is is more than 10 and since this guy is only between 6 and 10 if mean if we can establish that the mean is more than 10 I'm using A for average is more than 10 and median we know is between between 6 and 10 is between 6 and 10 and if we can establish that the average is more than 10 in that case the answer would be A that's what we have to do now we have to figure out where the average would fall is average going to be of this 95 observation something less than 6 in which case the answer would be median median is greater because median is between 6 and 10 or is the average of these 95 observations something that is going to be between 6 and 10 in which case the answer is going to be D as in David because so is the median median is also between 6 and 10 or is the average of this 95 observation something that is more than 10 we will never know the precise value of it there is there, there is no way it is impossible to figure out the precise value of the average of these 95 observation but we can tell with certainty which scenario which which scenario we're dealing with after a little bit of work so let's do that are you with me let's do that let's start with the lower end the six okay let's let's find out if average is less than six i'm going to pick up speed now otherwise it's going to be, be very large video not very large very long video now we have 95 observations we have 95 observation this is the n and this is the average i'm going to use a for the average if we claim that average is something less than 6 if we, if we can claim that uh, if we can establish that the average is something less than this then 95 times something less than 6 will represent their sum sum of the 95 observations so we're going to use letter S for the sum of the 95 observations so I don't have to keep writing the sum if we can establish that sum of the 95 observations is something less than 95 times 6 then the average is less than 6 because sum represents 95 times 6 if you divide that by 95 we'll get the average of you get the idea this is what we have to establish let's find out shall we 95 times 6 is about 600 let's see what happens let's see what happens okay let's get going let's get going we have 15 observations I don't know what was here I, 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 I don't remember what was written here probably nothing was written here we have 15 observations we have 15 observations but what are those 15 observations we do not know we do not know so what we're going to do is to play safe be conservative be very very conservative and figure out the most conservative estimate of the average what are we going to do we're going to establish the most conservative estimate of average by pretending by pretending that all of these 15 observations they're from they're from one they're from one to five one to five they're from 1 to 5 we're going to pretend that they are all ones we're going to pretend that all of these 15 observations are just one because that's the lowest possible scenario 15 times 1 is just 15 then we have 35 observations and they are between 6 and 10 they are between 6 and 10 they are between 6 and 10 we do not know what they are 
we want to play it safe, we want to be most conservative, we're going to pretend that all 35 of those observations are sixes. That's the lowest possible sum of those 35 observations. The lowest possible sum of those 35 observations is 35 times 6 because they all have to be between 6 and 10, therefore they all must be at least 6. 35 times 6, what is 35 times 6? Well, 30 times 6 is 180. 30, 30, times 6 is, 30 times 6 is 180 and 5 times 6 is 30. 180 plus 30 is 210. Are you with me so far? Let's pick up speed. The next, next one we have 15. 15 times, again we're going to pretend that they are all 11s. We're going to pretend that they are all 11s. 15 times 10 would have been 150. 15 times 11 is 165. We're already approaching 400. You see, there is 200 right here. 15 and 165, there's another 200. We're already approaching 400. Let's go to the next category. 12 times, 12 times what? 12 times 16. We're going to pretend they are 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. These 12 observations, some of them are 16, some of them are 17, 18, 19, 20. We're going to pretend they are all 16, just to be on the safe side. They are all 16. What is 12 times 16? Well, I know 16 times 10 is 160. 10 16s is 160. We don't have 10 16, we have 12 16, so we need two more 16s, which is 32. So it's about 190. It's about 190. There you go. That's another 190. There you go. We are already approaching 600. We are already approaching 600. Mean of these observations is not going to be less than 60. Uh, less than 6. Mean of this uh, 95 observation is not going to be less than 6. And I'll, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. We should have known, we should have realized from the very beginning that the mean, the average of these 95 observations cannot possibly be less than 6. And I'll tell you why. Okay, listen very carefully. You see? There are 15 observations here. Let me use a different color. There are 15 observations here in this, in this interval. And there are the same number of observations in this interval. In other words, in other words, what's the average? What's the average of 3, 6, and 9? Well, 3 is 6, 3 is 3 less than 6, and 9 is 3 more than 6. They cancel each other out, they negate each other. This is 3 less than 6 and this is 3 more than 6. They negate each other and the average of these three numbers is 6. So the average of these observations, 15 observations plus 35 observations, that's 50 observations. Average of the first 65 observation, average of the first 65 observation is already something between 6 and six and 10. The average of the first 65 observation, 15 observation plus 35 observation, that's 50 observation. Another 15 observation, that's 65 observation. The average of the first 65 observation, if you forget everything else, the average of the first three interval is already between 6 and 10. It is not less than 6. And by the time you get to the other observations, they are all more than 6. Actually, they are way more than 6s. So every time you add any of these observations to the 90, to our 65 observations that we already have, they pull the average up. Average cannot possibly be less than 6 of this 95 observation. That is something we should have realized from the very beginning just by visual inspection, just by looking at it, which takes no more than 3 seconds. We should have realized average cannot be 6. In other words, in other words, answer cannot be, the average cannot be 6. In this case, the answer would have been B. Average is less than 6, median is something more than, answer in this case would have been B. B is not going to be the answer. Answer is going to be either, either A, C, or D. And when is the answer going to be C? Answer is going to be C when the sum of the observations, listen carefully, when the sum of these 95 observations is something that falls between 600 and 1000. This is all approximation because we're not going to do exact calculation. Why 600 and 1000? Because we are pretending the average is 6 and we are pretending there are 100 observations, in the, even though in reality we have 95 observations. 6 times 100 is 600 and 10 times 100 is 1000. If the average happens to be 10, something less than 10, if the average happens to be something less than 10, and since we have something less than 95 observation, we have 95 obs something less than 100 observation, since we have 95 observation, if the sum of this observation falls between 600 and 1000, then the answer is going to be D. Then in that case, the answer is going to be D, because the average falls between 6 and 10. If we can establish, if we can establish that the sum of these, sum of these 95 observation is something more than 1000, if we can establish that the sum if we can establish that the sum is more than a thousand, which would imply that the average is more than a ten, if average is more than ten, 
then we can tell, then we can, then we can claim that the answer is going to be A. We are almost done. I didn't want to explain all, all this problem in this much detail, but it's okay. It's all right. Do you understand? We're already up to 600. Let's keep on going. And as we go in the next categories, the, the things are going to pick up very quickly. We have 10 observations, and we're going to pretend they are all 21s. There are 10 observations, and they are all 21s. So that's 210. There we go. We're already up to 800. We are already up to 800. And then finally, we have 5 observations, and we are going to pretend that they are all 26. 5 times 26, 5 times 26 is 125. And finally, finally, we have three observations, three observations, and we're going to pretend that they're all 31s. They are all 31. And that's equal to 100. Now, in all fairness, when I put down equal to, I'm going to erase this thing here. This part is okay. This is, this is equal to that. This is not exactly equal, you see. I'm approximating. I'm just approximating. It doesn't have to be precise. This wasn't properly equal. You get the idea, right? I don't, I don't want to be too picky. Because it, this is not a precise calculation. If I put down equal sign by mistake, just understand that these are not exactly equal. This is approximate. Because 25, 25 times 5 would have been 125. This is 26 times 5. 3 times 31, we know it's not exactly 100. It's about 100. This is 210. This is approximate. There we go. We're done. One more time. Okay, one more time. Stay with me the story as I go through it slowly. So there is 200 right there. I can see it right there. 165. 165 and 15, that's another 200. That's 400 so far. That's 400 so far. There is another 200. We are up to 600. That's how we established that the, uh, the mean was not less than 600. And we need another 400, and we have another 400. There is a 200 right here. So now we are up to 800, and this is already more than 200. The sum, whatever it is, is more than 1,000. Sum is more than a thousand, thousand, and therefore, and therefore, the average, the mean, is going to be. The mean is going to be something more than a thousand. The sum that is more than a thousand divided by ninety-five. Something more than a thousand divided by ninety-five is going to be more than ten. And the and the median we know is between six and ten. Mean is something more than ten. Therefore, the answer is A. Therefore, the answer is A. We are done. Oh my lord. Oh, that was something. Let's take a look at the next page, see what we have. Hopefully, not something just as nasty. Oh, next page is, next page is not, that, not that bad at all. Next page is not bad at all. Except problem number five. Problem number five is something we need to understand a little bit. But all the rest are not that bad at all. And tomorrow, we'll do the next page. We'll do 3, 4, 5, and 6 in the next video. Okay? Bye now.